I consider myself very lucky to having been um, contacted by a director I'd worked with. Uh, we became good friends named Richard Fleischer to do another film with him called uh, Mr. Majestic. It's one of my favorite films. It's very different. It's, it's, uh, it's by an actor that I've done many films with, uh, Charlie Bronson, who is a, a unique actor. He's low key. There's nobody like Johnny Bronson. Uh, oh, come on, what is this game? In time, you'll find out. You know, we could be in L.A. tonight, get in a couple of broads, go to Mexico City in a few days, cruise around, get a boat, anything you want. Been to L.A. and I've been to Mexico, and I've been laid. Well, what do you want? I want to get a melon crop in. The premise of the film is quite unusual also. It's about a melon grower. Is that yours? Yep. 160 acres. My second crop. I don't make it this time. The conflict there of where, uh, where Bronson, whether he does the right thing, he's in danger, or he does something not quite right or something, he's in more danger. One thing that Charlie did, Charlie Bronson, he was very clever uh, in in, de in defending himself and the way he went about it. And he was a, a very, uh, not an excitable man, but he could explode, physically explode. This really is a film with a lot of action, really good action, God. The story takes place in uh, beautiful Colorado where Mr. Majestic, Charlie Bronson, has a, a watermelon farm. He's a peaceful man. The environment is uh, conducive to that. And, um, and he has a crop of, wa of watermelons that are ready to be picked and uh, it's time to get them to market as soon as possible. And we had a window in reality of um, getting it underway immediately because it's the season and they, they don't last that long. So there is a crunch to get the picture underway right away, which I was amenable to. And, uh, and going to Colorado was just being in that pristine uh, atmosphere uh, made it very pleasant and uh, Majestic had a very choice piece of land. And um, that's where the story uh, starts, but there's conflict right away where uh, he runs into a, a strange situation where there's a rivalry of uh, watermelon pickers. The pickers have to be selected that, that pick the uh, the war watermelons from, from the property, put them into trucks, and uh, Charlie gets into a conflict right there. We could hear these guys already got a crew working. What the hell are we supposed to do? Go home? And uh, they get into a fight. Me, little ass picker like you need a gun. <laughs> the story to me is a, is a really good story. Very unusual and unexpected. I looked at a review of the picture and it, the, the title was Don't Screw With Bronson's Melons. <laughs> the, the sequence in a quaint town with Alateri and uh, Bronson uh, in the back of a police truck where a gun battle is taking place between 
the bad guys and the police. The action is, is quite quick, quick and ferocious, and there are like four or five killings, back and forth, good guys, bad guys. Really, a lot of good action. The stuntmen really did an excellent job there with the, with the, you know, getting wounded or killed. And the drivers also. Some of the stuntmen were driving the vehicles. And then finally, uh, Latari in and, and the police car and, uh, and Bronson it skadoodled out, out of town. And it really whipped up the, the, uh, the dust. <laughs> Latieri really was good, wasn't he? <laughs> There is a female interest, uh, Linda Crystal, equally as uh, skilled and uh, fearless. We've uh, come to the portion of the picture where during a hectic car chase in the open road uh, in Colorado, Charlie is in the back of a pickup truck and, and we're bouncing all over the place. We're moving, you know, uh, speeding along, bouncing, uh, and uh, the bouncing was created uh, by us uh, in most instances uh, where we shoveled it. So there were little mounds that we went over. The, the mounds, some bigger than others, created uh, the airborne effect. It really did look hazardous. Charlie is lying on his back. We have the camera from over the back of his head showing his body. And uh, I, was in, I was in the back of the truck with Charlie, and the camera operator had the camera over Charlie's uh, left shoulder. And the um, tailgate is up. And so he can barely see over it. And he was clever enough when he was ready to really open up fire, he, with his foot, pushed it open and was able now to, to see what he was shooting and did it. I know I thought that at the time, how clever it was. And Charlie did it on his own. Very exciting sequence, and it really was very spectacular. But that's one of my favorite uh, uh, action moments of, of the film. And uh, we only did it once. We did it in you know, several stages, but we only did it once. It really was a, a hair-raising uh, chase, without a doubt. We were lucky to have very well maintained vehicles. I don't recall experiencing any kind of a uh, breakdown. No. We were very lucky. And because it was soft earth that was uh, dust, dusty earth that it would, when it, if it was airborne, it would land on something soft and kick up a lot of dust which even made it more exciting. The car chase continued on and uh, we, we entered an area where they had these very beautiful red rocks, huge red rocks. And the light was just right where it was cross light and, and it, it enhanced them also. And it made it even more exciting, but beauty at the same time. You didn't know what, whether to take your eye off something or or followed the chase. Uh, it was, they were both so interesting. We really actually did not try to show off the beautiful terrain. It's not that it was so beautiful, but it was, um, it was inviting, a very, in, very inviting terrain. Richard Fleischer, I've done many films with Richard. Uh, he's really, um, a, a past master at action. He was very good with action sequences. And uh, all of the chase sequences, we worked out in advance. And uh, with Fleischer and myself, and the, the stunt coordinator, Paul Baxley is one of my, my favorites. I've done tons of films with him. 
and the stunt drivers. All of the action sequences weren't done just haphazardly. They, they were really worked out, and that's what made them so exciting. And it was really a pleasure to see it come to fruition. Uh, we talked about it, we lined it up, and now seeing it happen. And just like that. And it happened first takes all the time. Uh, no injuries of any kind, no breakdowns, which could happen. And, uh, it, and here, it's just good planning and the, and the best people doing it. And, uh, and you know, Richard Fleischer is known for that. The physical action of Charlie Bronson, I thought he was, the few reviews I've read, every review I've read, they all say it's his best picture. I love working with Charlie Bronson. We're not only, uh, we collaborated on films, but we were personal friends. But Charlie was cool, always cool. Charlie would never leave the set. He would, he would be maybe 10 feet behind camera, sitting in a chair by himself, uh, thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, he had a great sense of humor, uh, kind of a wicked one, but a good wicked. Uh, He's a handsome guy, a great, he had a, a great, strong face. I mean, he really was a powerful looking. His voice was a soft voice, but one that had, had uh, determination. And uh, Charlie was a good sport. He really, uh, he's a good action actor, without a doubt. It's probably the best, but he played sweet roles also. Uh, and. Uh, there's this, nobody could come close to him, I don't think, no actor. And, uh, and he was a pleasure to be around. And he only lived about two blocks from me <laughs> in, in Westwood. So we used to see each other all the time, uh, and a lovely wife. Uh, really a remar remarkable man, and uh, just a pleasure to have known and, uh, and to admire.